Welcome to Education in Focus. I'm your host, Eliana Kernodal. After charges were announced against administrators and test proctors allegedly involved in a fraudulent teacher certification scheme, state agencies said they would follow law enforcement's lead to ensure teachers were properly licensed. Joining me to dig into this is Chalkboard News Editor Brennan Clary. Brennan, where did this scheme originate and what are the details? Yeah, so this this scheme originated in in Houston Independent School District, and there has been you know some other kinds of uh, scandals and, and stuff that's issue that that has come from around there. And that's is also a very tense thing. There was the state takeover of Houston ISD last year, I believe, and and that was you know that's a big big move and a, a very big deal. Uh, so there's there's a lot of stuff going on in Houston, and that's um, that's where it originated. Essentially, what what prosecutors has allege. What prosecutors allege, and we have to use that language um, in, in our reporting and, and on here as well, uh, because things have not, you know, kind of been finalized by by a court of law. So this is what prosecutors are alleging, and this is what they've been charged with: um, that a um, at Vincent Grayson uh, Boys High School coach at Berkeley T. Washington High School uh, is the one behind the organized uh, cheating scheme. Again, that's what that's what prosecutors allege, and that the scheme allowed administrators to take the tests instead of teachers. And so they, uh, and, and so there's a number of um, administrators as well from from Houston Independent School District uh, that that were charged and and allegedly um, were were involved in in you know taking the exams on behalf of teachers so that they would be certified uh, fraudulently. So in a nutshell, that's that's where it started. And, and the charges are coming from the Harris County District Attorney's Office. So that's a District Attorney Kim Ogg. Uh, and that started out uh, last week when she announced that, you know, five individuals from Houston Independent School District and, and you know, uh, others in the area, some of these test proctors who are not related to any school district, were allegedly involved in this. And what are the wider consequences of this? Yeah, I think I think uh, if you start looking at it, if you start thinking about it, you know, you, you hear that at least 200 uh, up to 400 uh, of these teachers were allegedly falsely uh, certified, fraudulently certified, you'd, you'd have to think like, okay, well, how do I know that my student's teacher is, you know, certified or what, how, what are the consequences of that in terms of, you know, some of these states that have what's called reciprocity. So in the small term, I think uh, Houston ISD has to think about um, like, how do you restore trust to the public school system and how do you restore trust uh, in this case of, you know, following following up and, and helping law enforcement, but but basically making sure uh, that parents know that, okay, my teachers are, uh, the teachers at the school are certified and are supposed to be there, right? Because that, 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 it brings into question the credentials that are essential to this. And, and one of the disturbing things that Og brought up uh, is that she alleged that some of these um, fraudulent Certifications went to child predators, essentially, and that they they've been charged with these with these crimes, and were able to become you know sort like get these these teacher credentials. So it's it's one of those concerning things of you're not sure exactly how far this goes. And I mean, two hundred to four hundred uh, teachers is not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but in terms of how many teachers there are, you know, nationwide. But in terms of one school district or is it a specific loca- like locale? That that's a big problem, and then you know more broadly, as I, as I mentioned with reciprocity, there you know there are states like Arizona, for example, that will allow anyone with an out of state teacher license to come in, basically no questions asked. Like you can teach in a classroom here, you just have to show us your you know you know your Texas uh, teacher's license, and so they'd be able to do that in this case with that fraudulent license, and you know be able to to get you know access to a classroom, get a job as a teacher at a public school. And so I, I think that with those states, I believe there are eight states that have that reciprocity. There are concerns there of like, how do we know that this teacher actually is, has been certified? Because there is uh, allegedly this failure to of the system to kind of keep you know keep things in check. So that that's really what it is. Is this is a crack, an alleged crack in in the system that is intended to prevent unqualified individuals from from being in the classroom with students. And I think that that. The, the implication of that is is pretty jarring, uh, you know, in the, in the small like Houston area s- side of things, but also, you know, in maybe these other states of like, how do, how do you kind of, it, it would make your faith in, you know, a teaching license waiver if you are thinking, okay, well, you know, 
did my teacher just come from Arizona or, you know, it, it kind of raises a question, or sorry, from, from Texas. It, makes, it raises questions about, uh, you know, the authenticity of, of a teacher certification. And what kinds of steps are the state agencies who are involved in this? What steps are they currently taking to address this issue? Yeah, I, I think, you know, one of the big things that they're doing and, and what I, HISD is doing is working with uh, state and local law enforcement. Uh, so they're working with, you know, the Texas Education Agency. They told they told Chalkboard uh, that they're going to be working with the State Board of Educa- uh, for Educator Certification. Uh, they're going to be working with, um, you know, law enforcement and basically you know, do anything that they need to do based on law enforcement's recommendation. Same thing with the Arizona Department of Education. They said that they would work with uh, Texas Department of Education and, you know, they would work with the different uh, investigative units uh, at the Arizona Arizona State Board of Education and, you know, kind of go through the different, the different processes there with law enforcement. There's also like a, um, one of the the things with Arizona that they're going to work on too is with that reciprocity organization that basically allows teachers to to teach anywhere, the, the, that is something that they'll work with to to you know make sure that those teachers aren't you know, on that list and they'll, they'll be flagged no matter where they go and what state. So there are these mechanisms that that are in place still to help recover from this, but it's you know it's a breach that is local and and also more national as well. Well, Brennan, thank you for your insights on this story. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at chalkboardnews.com. <laughs> 